This video is on problem 4.1 and 4.2. These two problems are very similar in nature. So in 4.1, we have to consider a general state of stress and we have to use the summation of forces to derive these three equations. Now the only difference in 4.2 is that there are these additional body forces which is x, y and z. These are the volumetric per unit volume intensities that are given to you. So if I put x, y and z equals to 0 in 4.2, I will be getting the same answer as 4.1. So we will solve 4.2 and at the end we can substitute xyz equals to 0 and reach the same equations which are given here. So let's start looking at the 4.2 problem. So for this purpose we need to consider a general state of stress. So for clarity I have drawn here three cubes here. On this one I will be just looking at the stresses on x phase, here on y phase and on this one on z phase. But in reality all of these three will be overlapped with each other. So if you look at your x phase here, this is your positive x phase and this one right here is your negative x phase. In terms of stresses, on this side all of these components are going to be acting in the positive direction. And similarly here everything will be acting in the negative direction. That's the convention that we follow. From the names, this is going to be sigma x, this is also sigma x here. Now since we are moving by a distance of delta x here, the values may not be same. So this one is sigma x dash and the left face of the negative x face has sigma x. Now this one right here is tau x y dash and this is tau x y. Similarly this one is tau x z dash and this one is tau x z. If you follow the convention you can see that on the x plane force in the y direction that's why this is tau x y. On the x plane force in the z direction that's why this is tau x z. Similarly, if you go to y phase, this is your positive y phase and this one right here is your negative y phase. On the positive y phase, again, all the stress components are going to be acting in the positive direction and here everything is going to be pointing in the negative direction. In terms of naming these stresses, your normal stress will be sigma y dash right here and sigma y here. This stress, it's on the y plane in the x direction, so tau y x dash here same thing here so tau y x right here this one on the y plane in the z direction that's why tau y z prime and this one is tau y z we can repeat this for the z faces also so this one right here is your positive z face and the one on the back side here this is your negative z face again on the positive one all the stress components are going to be in the positive direction so these are the stress components here and on the back face right here, everything is going to be in the negative direction. So this is how they are going to live. In terms of names, the normal stress here is going to be sigma z, so sigma z prime here and sigma z right here. In terms of shear, the one pointing in the x direction will be tau z x prime here and this one is tau z x. Similarly on the y direction, it's going to be tau z y prime here and this is tau z y. Now in addition to this we are going to have volumetric forces so capital X capital Y and capital Z will be present in addition to these stresses that we have. So after this we can start looking at the equilibrium requirement which is summation of forces in the x direction. So this will give us three equations one for x force balance, one for y force balance and one for z force balance. So if you look at your x force Considering all these stresses here, in the x direction this will play a role, this will play a role here, this one right here, this one right here, this one from here and this one from this one. So these are the six stress components that will play a role and in addition to that this x is also going to give you a force in the x direction. So if I have to write down the forces, remember these are stresses so to convert to forces we need to multiply by the area. So looking at the first cube here, the net force here is going to be sigma x dash minus sigma x now this is acting on this area right here and this area can be given by this length right here which is along the z direction so delta z and this height right here which is going to be delta y so this area right here is going to be delta y times delta z so that's the net force coming because of this one similarly if you look at the second one here the net force in the x direction is going to be tau y x dash minus tau y x. Now in this case your area is going to be 
given by these two lengths this one and this one right here so this is delta x delta z similarly in the last one your x force is going to be because of this one and this one so tau z x prime minus tau z x in this case your area is going to come from the height right here and this one right here so these two lengths are in x and y so delta x times delta y so these are the forces because of your stresses in addition to this we are going to get the volumetric force which is capital x which is this intensity right here times the volume of the element so volume of the element is delta x delta y delta z equals to zero so now let's focus on these individual terms so let's say if i want to write down sigma x prime now why this sigma x is changing from sigma x to x prime because we have a movement along the x direction by delta x here so that's why the change in this is going to be sigma x plus some small amount delta sigma x and this delta sigma x can be given by derivative of sigma x with respect to x since we are moving in the x direction by delta x so from here you can figure out your sigma x prime minus sigma x is given by derivative of sigma x with respect to x times the distance that you have moved which is delta x similarly if you look at your y x shear stress now this change is happening because we are moving in y direction by a distance of delta y right here right so if you follow the same logic this can be written as dou tau y over dou y in this case since we are moving in the y direction and similarly for this last term right here we can write down tau z x prime minus tau z x now this movement is happening because of movement in the z direction because when we move in z direction by delta z our stresses are changing from tau z x to tau z x prime so this has to be derivative of tau z x with respect to z times delta z so now i can substitute these back into this equation so first one becomes derivative of sigma x with respect to x times delta x times this area delta y delta z from the second term we get derivative of y x with respect to y times delta y times the area which is delta x delta z the last term tau z x derivative with respect to z times delta z times this area which is delta x delta y plus the volumetric term that we have so capital x times delta x delta y delta z equals to zero so now you can see that in all these three terms we have this volume which is common so what do we get from this equation we get derivative of sigma x over x plus derivative of y x over y plus z x over z plus capital x equals to zero so now here we can uh, see that this is coming from x force balance right so if you look at these individual terms what is the role of sigma x sigma x is nothing but sigma x x so this is on x plane and force in the x direction similarly if you look at your tau y x this is on y plane and force in the x direction this one right here is on the z plane force in the x direction plus the volumetric force in the x direction equals to zero so these derivatives that you have they are coming from the plane you can notice that and all the terms here they have the force direction always in the x direction there so with this you can follow a pattern so now for the second equation if you want to do the y force balance there will be again four terms similar to this one your first term will come from the x plane second term from y plane third one from z plane but all the forces now are going to be in the y direction so x plane here y plane here and z plane right here and force direction is y direction force y direction force and y direction force plus your volumetric force which is going to be y equals to zero now this we have already seen the derivatives are always matching your plane direction so if this is x plane derivative is x y plane derivative is y z plane derivative is z so let's do this now so the first term we are going to be on the x plane force direction is y so which stress is that so on the x plane 
y direction force this is the stress we are talking about now since we are on the x plane your derivative is going to be with respect to x so that's how your first term is second term y plane y direction stress this is going to be your sigma y y or sigma y now derivative is always coming from the plane direction so this is your second term similarly your third term z plane y direction stress is going to be tau z y divided by z because we are on the z plane plus volumetric force equals to zero so this is just following the pattern otherwise you can write this equation in the similar manner which we have done right here by doing the force balance considering all the y forces so if i go here and if i have to do the y force balance we are going to pick up this right here this right here this one right here this one right here and this one right here and this one right here and you can see that these are the same terms that are appearing in our equation right now so by now you should have understood the pattern that we are following so if we do z force balance first we do plane and then we look at your force the plane directions are x y and z the force now is always in the z direction because we are looking at z force balance plus you are going to have your volumetric force equals to zero so which stresses on the x plane in the z direction tau x z derivative is going to be respect to x because your plane is x plane right here second one y plane z direction force meaning y z derivative comes from your plane direction so derivative respect to y plus stress on z plane in the z direction so sigma z z or sigma z derivative respect to z because that comes from the plane plus z equals to zero so these are the three equations we have got now if you notice there is a small change compared to what they have asked in the problem so let's say if i look at this equation this is your first one this one is your second one and this right here is your third equation now in the first equation right here the second term is tau y x here and the third term is tau z x here now in the original problem if you see that this is given as tau x y and tau z x right so this one is tau x y and this one is tau z x right now in the absence of point wise moments your tau x y is going to be tau y x and tau z x is going to be tau x z so now to summarize we can just rewrite all these equations one more time and the pattern is this that you are going to have an x derivative a y derivative a z derivative plus the direction of force that you are considering same thing in the second equation this is for your y force balance and third equation is again x derivative y derivative z derivative plus volumetric force now this one right here has to be x plane x direction this is y plane x direction z plane x direction this is x plane y direction y plane y direction z plane y direction this one right here x plane z direction y plane z direction z plane z direction so on this side right here we have plane x y and z and this side we have force which is x y and z right here